we've gathered here today. We've gathered here to pray. Hear our cry. Do you want to explain that? Well, so very often 
you get super spiritual Christians. When I was a new Christian, I had one guy would come up to you and almost pin you to a wall and ask, how are you today? And I, if you said, oh, I'm fine, thank you, he'd say, I mean spiritually, not physically. <laughs> you know, so some of these Christians can be daunting. Mm. So, so the a go seeking on. advice from a Christian that you know is solid is quite a a good thing with the Bible, the whole package, you know, the ABC. Check it all out, all three methods. Yeah, the ABC was advice from a, I don't know, uh, what, a wise, sane Christian. B yeah. was, is this in line with what the Bible says? And C, is this oh, common yeah. sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're all good, three good things for discerning God's voice, definitely. Anybody else had a, a bit that really stood out to them? Dorothy? Uh, I liked it his first presentation of um, a, a visual aid, the old phone on the table, but then said, oh, I won't use that, and got his phone out and said, oh, I know it's God that's calling because I've got him in my phone already. I thought yeah. that was uh, yeah, reverse visual aid. Yes, that was clever, wasn't it? And I think those visual ways of teaching are, are really helpful. All that he's had on his bookshelves have really been good reminders, haven't they, that we can remember things from. I, re uh, I realised what an anorak I was when, he, when the phone appeared and I went, that's a 706 telephone. <laughs> I don't know. It really is, but I'm just, what am I doing? Um, <laughs> Regressing into your uh, young life. <laughs> it was going to be Dorothy, but her hand's gone down, unless oh. she wanted something to say, but then it... Uh, no, Alice. let Alison go first while she's got it on her mind. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, now, I'm, now I am... <laughs> no, I, I like the idea that God um, speaks to people in different ways. That's certainly my experience, especially with myself and my husband. Um, and also, um, I thought it was nice that he said um, that uh, for him, if I'm remembering correctly, for him, um, God spoke to him through the Bible, you know. And I suppose um, it's just that coming back again to how important it is um, to read the Bible. Um, and I'm saying this to myself because, <laughs> because it's something I need to do and and that's why I'm finding the Bible in the year so good mm. um because you know what I mean it's sort of um I, I, so I'm listening to it but that's actually a question I'm going to ask maybe at a later a later point it um it's something I want to um ask the group but I'm, I'll mention it later on because it's not so applicable now um but yeah that's what stuck up for me okay you're not going to forget your question what shall I say then? Yeah, go it's on. About, it's it sort of, well, yeah, what it is. So I've decided, because I'm so bad at, um, you know, re can I say this, I'm so bad at reading the Bible, but, you know, when you've got these long bits to read, like yeah. the Bible, yeah, yeah. that I, if I did audio, then yeah. I could go, I could walk, I could listen, and what have you. And that's actually been quite good, but... Then I thought to myself, especially today, that actually, although I'm listening to it, and I am, it is helping me to understand the story because you get a big chunk. But the thing when you re actually read the word, then God can make things, you know, you can, things can jump out at you, you know what I mean? God can impress things on you. And I'm just wondering, if I'm just listening to the audio, am I really missing out on well, the reading? Yeah, actually, it, I think it's a really good idea to listen to the audio when you're walking and, you know, I sometimes yeah. listen to stuff when I'm walking as well. But I'd probably want to come back to bits that had really, you know, got my attention and I wanted to find out more. I would probably want to just come back and look at that again. Yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't give up on the listening because I think that, it's an easy way to absorb God's word, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's hard to retrace and think, well, actually, what was that? What, 
what was actually being said there, I would need to go back and have a look at it as well. Mm. Mm. But not necessarily all, you know, there are three readings, aren't there, in Bible in a year. And it would probably, yeah. might only be one that you actually wanted to go back and really have another look at. Yeah. I so, suppose the positive thing is with the reading, uh, with the app, is that you can actually um, go back and see it written down. So you can see actually what he said written, you know. So if you good. listen to it and you think, oh, I need to go back to that, that's then good. you can actually scroll yeah, because I haven't done the, I haven't used the app. I've just, I get oh, it to my email every day so I can just read it, but I haven't actually heard it. But yeah, it sounds like you've got the facility to do that anyway. Yeah. Work in progress. I'm going to think that through. Thank you, Sue. Well, I think it's good to try all sorts of different ways until you find something that works. And it probably won't work for you forever. I think we just... Uh, constantly need to find new ways as well yeah yeah thank you my thoughts my thoughts oh. <laughs> anybody else Go on. yeah on that we um listen to david Suchet, but are also reading at the same time uh and the fact yeah. that he can say some of the words that we can't his or his expressions as he's putting emphasis on things it is making it absolutely real, doing the two together. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, yeah, it, it's come alive for us, absolutely. Yeah. On that same subject, did how many picked out daily when he read three times, give us this yeah. day daily bread? Yeah. 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 But yeah. I think it did, it was the word I said straight away, yeah. daily, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dorothy. Mm -hmm. Dorothy. I'll do it daily. <clears throat> Well, we can't hear you very well. Oh, uh, I've got my I've got a different laptop. That's why. Can, can you hear me now? No. Yeah. Very faint. We'll all sit further forward. <laughs> Let me see the volume. Yeah. Oh, that's better. Can you hear me better now? No. Mm -hmm. A little bit. You've got a very little voice. Up. Uh, On 100%. I'll use the other laptop. If you okay. Um, Ooh, just building on what uh, Joan and, and Alison have said, um, I mean, Alison might be walking around and enjoying the listening. So, because I would agree with Joan to read it so that to, at the same time, so that she's hearing it as well as seeing it. So, what I what my, I would suggest to Alison is that if you're walking around and you can't apply Joan's um, system, which is you know ideal. Then come back, plan to come back to the bit that you want to listen to and just read it out loud to yourself. And like a child learning to read, I mean, I've, I, I can read Bengali, but I cannot understand it because I've learned the alphabet. And apparently I, read it, I used to read it really well, better than this, my teacher's children. But I have no idea what I was reading. So what I'm saying is it might be a struggle at the beginning, but just read the word out loud. And then you'll be audioing yourself as well as reading. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Uh, so, yeah, back to my bit now, should I? No. Thank, you. thank you. I think one, one bit that really struck me actually came from the book as opposed to the um, video. And that was him saying, and this might help Alison maybe, I don't know. He said... Learning about God from the Bible requires study. Mm. Listening to God through the Bible requires prayerful meditation. Mm. And I thought that was so relevant. You know, you can, I'm going to read the Bible, I'm going to learn every verse, I'm going to know, you know, all the links, all that I can do, all the academic stuff in the Bible. Mm. And it will teach you about the Bible but it won't necessarily make you more able to listen to God. And by listening to God, you need to spend, uh, and that can be walking around, Alison, you know, you don't have to be sitting down to do that. But mm. the listening to God through the Bible requires prayerful meditation. And I, I like that. Mm, it was, 
And then, of course, in the actual um, video, he gave some examples of how to use prayerful meditation on a very short bit of the Bible or on a, a couple of verses. Anyway, anybody else? Dorothy. The bit I was going to say. A uh, bit about the, the register with me. It was the last bit when you said, um, read the Bible is familiarization. Explore the text, which is imagination. Pray the text, which is conversation. And then enjoy the text, which is celebration. The first three, no problem with. But I didn't really understand, and I didn't really, because in the example you used, you didn't actually go into the celebration bit. So when we come to chat, if people have got um, um, anything to say about how you enjoy the text as a, in a form of celebration, that'd be helpful. <coughs> Can you remind us what the third one was? Because it, the read it familiarization, the, uh, then there was imagination. That was explore the text. Explore and, and then, then pray, pray the text. and then enjoy. The praying was what? Pray the text, which was conversation. Conversation, yeah. Anybody got any ideas about the celebration aspect of enjoying God's word? Well, yeah, Alison. Well, I just thought immediately came into my mind. I don't know if this is, is going to be helpful, but I was just thinking about the promises of God. And um, there's some things which um, I realise as a Christian that there's some things that I really hang on to. Um, oh, mind you, that's not terribly helpful. That's not really right. Well, I think for me, I think it's the promises of God and that's what you can celebrate so yeah. but then if you're not haven't read a promise then can you celebrate yeah the promise, you can celebrate it yeah but if it's if the promise isn't in the text yeah i suppose you yeah that's hard i suppose maybe you can't yeah i don't know i'm, I'm so sorry that wasn't very helpful because i realized because very often you can find a promise in the verse yes then you can celebrate. <laughs> so go back for the promise. <laughs> Claire! I think personally for me, it's a wonderful way of celebrating life itself by feeling that we are all children of God and that he is my Holy Father, my Heavenly Father, my all in all and I think personally for me that's what the celebration is and also to know that I'm saved as a Christian and to know where I'm going finally in my forever home and I think that's wonderful to celebrate mm -hmm. yeah yes I find it quite easy or easier to celebrate when I'm singing some fantastic song that's based on scriptural words um, mm. and it just puts you in a mood of wanting to celebrate. I mean, come to mind is the, the song that starts by saying celebrate, you, know, you, will, you probably all know it. Um, mm. So I find that easy, um, <laughs> it, just an example. Mm. I think yeah. he was saying that we celebrate the tech, you know, whatever we like. He, he uh, give us this day our daily bread. He didn't go on to um, he explained very well the first three points, but then didn't go on to say how you celebrate. Um, what did you uh, say? Mm -hmm. Difficult to hear. It is. Quite... I don't know whether this was in the book or uh, whether it was in the video because, <coughs> but me, I've sort of seen, I've done them both, so I'm not sure, but. Uh, in the ABC bit, the, when you're talking about advice and taking counsel from a wise elderly Christian or a young one, that doesn't matter. Um, I like the bit, and it struck home to me, where he said he'd gone to... He and Sammy were uh, not in agreement. They were not seeing eye to eye about something. And he went to see uh, a friend, an old friend, Christian friend, who got a very strong Cockney accent, and he listened to him, and he said at the end of it, 
just do the thing that make your old lady happy. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I'll do that. That's a good idea. The chapter started with something that really grabbed my attention, which I didn't know, but apparently that who has anybody read this chapter this week? <clears throat> yeah, well, you know what I'm talking about. That babies who are born deaf make just as many noises as babies who can hear okay. at first. But attempts at speech soon trail off. And he was drawing the analogy that only those who listen and who can hear become fluent in prayer. What do you think of that? I thought it was quite interesting. Mm. Just something to think about. Put it in mm. also, a... Go on. Who was that? Me. Yeah? <coughs> it's almost an illustration then. If you meet someone from the fir for the first time, you just have a, maybe a stilted conversation, quite short. And the more you get to know them, the longer and easier the conversation <laughs> gets. And I think when you're talking to the Lord, if you do it day after day, and as we're told to pray without ceasing, it becomes easier, it becomes a natural thing. Mm. Mm. Eric. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> I think I think listening is probably one of the most uh, least um, practiced skills. Um, active listening, I think they call it, don't they? And yeah. listening is actually just as important as all as the other three because it's like when you meet somebody and you're talking to them. How many times have it happened? I know it's happened to me personally where you're talking to the other person and you think they're listening, and then you see them looking over your shoulder at someone. Yes. Yeah. You think, you think, well, how impolite that is. You know, you're supposed to be listening to what I'm saying. And I think you can draw that same analogy with, with God, in, can't you? If you're, not listen, if you're not listening properly, I don't know, is he going to get fed up? Is he going to get angry with you that you're not listening? Or, or, or uh, I, I, I don't know. But listening is so important, I think, particularly these days. Mm. Can I respond to that, Eric? I mean, I, no, I have noticed that in old age, some of my friends, and not necessarily talking to me, but in general conversation, I've seen friends talking to other friends and some of the friends just drifting away. And I, th I think it's far more um, frequent in, in older people than it is in younger people. Um, but it took me back to listening to God through the Bible. And it's very easy when you're reading the Bible, for me anyway, I, you might, may, may all be different, but it's very easy to read the Bible and go through it quickly and miss stuff that God's actually saying, mm -hmm. just as in the same way as somebody drifts off when they are um, not listening to another person. Mm -hmm. So what I've tried to do, and he actually mentions it, I think it's in the book, I'm not sure it's in the video. You read a passage in the Bible and then reread it and then reread it slower. And sometimes on the third time through, you'll hear God. Um, so <laughs> it, that, that's another technique. That unprayerful meditation. Yeah. Over the text. Alison. Oh, well, I was just going to say that um, uh, when I think about prayer, um, it's, I think of it as being rela relational, you know, so you, it's actually part of a relationship with God. So, um, so obviously in a relationship you need to listen otherwise you're just talking at someone um and i suppose then thinking about the listening um that's i i, I really enjoyed that listening bit but again that's coming back to the rela relational thing is that um you know you have to listen to your partner that's part of having a relationship or a friend or whatever um 
so that's yes that's my my comment on that mm, definitely relational Claire. um in the program last night he said about in when he was reading samuel yes and um coming to giving the message to eli Mm. He said that God tried three times, even though Samuel got it wrong, or was it Eli that got it wrong? Well, Eli didn't realise that God was speaking to Samuel. Yes, but it was he came three times to him. Yeah. So if we don't hear it the first time, he will try and reach us again. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's right. If we're carrying on listening. Yes. Yeah. And the other interesting thing he brought out of that passage was that actually the voice of God doesn't have to be scary, booming sort yeah. of voice. It can actually, not surprisingly, if we're made in his image, it can actually sound like another human being. Mm. Yeah. Something else that he said was that Two ways that we can tune into God's voice were to slow down and to soften up. Slow down. Before we go on to that, actually, because there's a couple of questions I wanted to ask and get your thoughts on. Judith, did you want to say something before? Going back to the, the Samuel, we've, we just commented on it after. In about for two weeks, this is the third time we've studied the, the, the Samuel story. So this morning, um, I don't know how many people know the old hymn, Hushed Was the Evening Hymn, which was about Samuel. Um, mm. So I looked it up, and, and the third verse is just it's sitting out to me now. Oh, give me Samuel's ear, an open ear, O oh Lord, alive and quick to hear, each whisper of your word, like him to answer at the call and to obey the first of all. And I think that that is, it's a lesson in itself. And I don't know if that was God saying to, to us, you know, this is the third time I've told you Samuel's um, story. Listen to what I'm saying. That's really interesting. And yeah, I do remember that, yeah. Hmm. You were saying. Well, I was just going to then pursue these ideas of how we can tune into God's voice. First, <coughs> we'll slow down, which is funny because this came up in our Malmesbury group yesterday, and we have one guy who uh, we weren't studying the prayer course, we were actually doing something on Exodus, <coughs> but it was about how what times and where have you really been able to listen to God? And this guy who is a very high powered, is in a full time job and is very, very busy and lots of responsibility was saying, well, when I slow down, I can listen to God. But actually I was thinking, you don't, necessarily have to be in a high pressured full-time job to need to slow down because actually as human beings we're incredibly clever at filling our days up with stuff well, I don't know maybe you're not but you know I want to fill my days up with stuff and there might be important stuff there might be stuff that is going to help somebody but it's still stuff isn't it and yeah, slow down. And uh, the question was what practical actions could we take this week to make time for listening to God? Which gets me back to the question I asked at the end of last week was about, uh, are you going to have a go at contemplative prayer? this week? And if so, how did it work? Is it a good time to ask you? Or are you going to look, look down and hide at this point? 
which is absolutely fine. She's been practicing the word, by the way. You can tell. She's <laughs> yes, I can do it now. <laughs> Alison. Um, can I just, well, I'll be honest and say not very well. That's because, fine. <laughs> because Probably I, really, I had this grand vision of um, myself, you know, like the prophets of old, you know, going into the countryside, up on the hilltops, communion with God and all the rest of it. And so I was all set up with my audio thing, went out through the door with the dog to um, be contemplative, you know, listening to the word of God and then being contemplative. And I just got so many, you know, there was the tractor, there was Izzy sniffing. It was, you know, there were so many distractions that actually it just became... Yeah, it didn't work. So I need to, um, I did try it another time and it, I, I was able to focus more and not to allow myself, you know, to be so distracted. But it was quite difficult. I'm not sure that I've cracked walking in contemplation, whether it's better to be in one place so that you don't get, do you know what I mean, distracted yeah. by what's going on. I think it might be a good idea to walk to a place and then stand or sit for five minutes yeah. give that a go yeah anybody else if i'm yeah. walking the dog i find that distractive i have to say that if i'm walking through the woods behind tesora park on my own i find there's not many distractions because can't even see traffic yeah yeah i went to um Yesterday, I went out to do an errand and I took uh, Tambor with me. And on the way back, we stopped at um, where we used to do the sunrise um, prayers. And um, I walked down to Morag Beach and it was just, it, there was just nobody, nobody there. And it was a beautiful, sunny morning. And I just, I thought, I'll try this. And I just sat down on a rock and for about, 10 minutes and just absorbed everything and it was just um such a different experience and it, it sort of took me back to um when i was in publishing um we were owned by a, a large american company uh, who have usa today and um they, they sent a load of uh, directors to warwick university for for a month um for training on, on how to be a better director and what have you. And one of the things they, they um, taught us was this matrix, like a box of you know, four boxes. And they all had labels on. And one of them was urgent, but not important. And one of the others was not urgent, but important. And we spend most of our times and our lives in the urgent, but not important box which yes. actually doesn't get a great deal done. It's mm. you know, the phone rings when you're doing something, so you, 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 you answer it, but it's not, not urgent. You know, it might, it, sometimes it is, but most of the times it isn't. The, the text that comes through on WhatsApp isn't necessarily urgent. It's, it's not important, but it's urgent because it's just it's happening mm -hmm. then. And you get yeah. deflected into that. When most of us, certainly as, uh, as managers and, and as people, I, I suspect now, should be spending more time in the, it's not urgent, but by goodness, it is important to spend time yeah. in that quietness with your loved ones, with your family, whatever. But it, yeah. takes, it takes real discipline to keep in that box. And, yeah. and the other, shove the other boxes further down the line but that, I think that's the lesson I learned from that uh, contemplation this week on oh, Morag Beach brilliant. thank you very much Eric mm -hmm. is that yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, early on in one of the the, um, the sessions um, Peter said about the, when they have alpha courses they always have prayer warriors yeah. So our old church at Caister was starting a new Alpha course and we said, well, we'd, we, we'd got so much out of the last one that we would sit here and pray. So Monday night, we um, got all our visual aids and everything ready and just thought, an hour? Are we going to be able to manage that? 
Well, about an hour and 10 minutes later, we suddenly realised we were going. And funnily enough, we had both had the same thoughts. It was obviously the church is hurting. We'd gone through everybody. It was difficult to actually concentrate on Alpha. But just the experience of everything just stopped around us. And for that hour and a bit, we were just totally, totally in the uh, in with, with God. And, and what we needed at that time, what was needed at that time. So that was, it took a while to actually come back. But when we did, I think it was a feeling of pure joy. So that was probably the celebration, the pure yeah. joy. Yeah. The other thing was yesterday, I uh, always, well, I often use my prayer, hold my prayer thing, usually in my left hand because it's not comfortable in my right hand. Um, and I always think, well, that is because I, I totally, I, I'm not left-handed at all. I need God's help in that hand for strength. And yesterday, for some reason, I found it in my right hand and it was comfortable. And that was, I felt God was saying to me, yeah, you're my hand. You need to do something now. Just, just don't sit there and wallow and be peaceful. You're my right hand. You need to get going. So that's, that's my experience this week of prayer. Of contact. Well, I've got to double faith prayer. Yeah. That's wonderful. And um, God spoke to you through that time of listening. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Judith. Anybody else wanted to share anything? Steph. Thank you. Um, just something came to my mind. I, <coughs> while, you know, I've been thinking about contemplative prayer and um, that for me and um, for Tim as well when we talk about these things as a couple even uh, with other people um, it's not always for me my experience isn't always that it's somewhere I have to be totally on my own or in a separated place um, and this this memory came up for me and it's more in relation with him but I remember he was down the black field picking blackberries a couple of years ago now. And he came back up and um, he had all scratches on him and stuff like this from reaching the blackberries. And he said to me, you know, while I was down there, he said, and I had the, I was leaning into the blackberries and I could see these beautiful big ones where the sun had got them on and I wanted to reach up and get them. But the more I reached up, the more... I got, as we say in Ireland, scrubbed. <laughs> there is smiling. She knows that's a, 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 a distorted English word. We got scratched, we got scrubbed. And, you know, he got quite badly hurt, but he was so intent, he told me, on getting the good fruit at the top. And he said, he heard the Lord say to him, you know, he just said it so simply, he said, you know, I want you to get the good fruit. But in order to do that, you have to press in and you have to press in and you're going to be hurt along the way. And um, what you said just struck a chord in me Judith, when you said the hurting church. And um, that's often the case we find ourselves in the hurting church, the hurting people, the hurting all of us, each of us. But it was just a lovely, as Tim was contemplating, it was a lovely thing for how God spoke to him about that and um, it was just just I think that can happen to us as well you don't have to do it really. well for me mm. so um, mm. yeah that saves me from having to say anything then say it again Tim I said that saves me from having to say anything <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, that was a lovely thing. Can, can, can I just tell you the story, actually? I was just listening to Eric earlier on saying that we have to listen. And there's a couple we know, uh, they run a children's home out in Thailand. And Charles is one of these that um, Glynis was talking about, super spirituals. And a good many years ago, I was over there, Stephanie was still in this country. And one weekend, I decided to go down to spend the weekend with him, to put the time in. And I was leaving on Sunday afternoon and myself and Charles and his wife, who's Malaysian, the old farm, we were just sitting down chatting away. 
And I said, well, I said, I want to go soon because I wanted to get away from where they were before it got dark. I wanted to get onto the main main road before it got dark. The next thing, Charles just stood up and said, excuse me, and he walked away. And he came back about 20 minutes later. And um, young Fong said to me, I said, don't mind Charles. He's, you know, he's, he'll have something to do. But Charles came back anyway. I said, I'm sorry about that, he said. I just felt God talking to me. I wanted to tell me something. So he said, I just excused myself and went into my room to talk to God. And I, you know, just when Eric was saying about listening to people, I, I just thought of that. Like he, he's this guy he gets up at three or four in the three and four o'clock in the morning to spend time with God. That's how much time he spends and how much he's you know being contemplative. But um you know, obviously he's, he's tuned in. Like I'm not sort of saying he's super spiritual and I'm not. I'm not anyway, but um, but like he's so tuned in to God talking to him that uh, it's just a, a normal thing for him. It's like if Stephanie said to me, you know, said something and I hear it. It's like when God speaks to Charles, he just hears him because it's just a practice with him. Hmm. If I said something and Tim heard me, that would elevate to miracle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, Can I go back to common sense? <clears throat> yes, yeah, come on. I just want to go back, if I may, to the C bit uh, of ABC, which is common sense, and how um, you speak to other Christians or non Christians for that matter, um, and what God wants you to say to them. And it's very easy if you don't listen to God and think, what would Jesus say? to just go rushing in there and, and talk about stuff that's going to put people off. And the classic example for me was when my brother-in-law uh, would be brought up as a Christian, was about 18, and he went to his, um, his own brother-in-law, who opened the door, and the first thing he said to him was, how's the state of your soul, Jim? No, brother. Brother, how's the state of your soul, brother? And Jim turned around and walked away. And he never came back to the Lord. And I, I, I'm, not, I'm not blaming. I'm just saying that if we don't use the common sense thing that says, how would Jesus do it? If we just go in like a bull in a china shop, yeah. I don't think that we're hearing what God's saying to us. Um, and it's a lesson for all of us. And, um, and for me as well, that, you know, be careful what you say and how you say it. Yeah. Yeah. I, totally, I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, Eric. At the same time, I do believe that people look to you how your behavior is and if you're a good example as a Christian and also not only how you speak to them, what you say to them, it's your tone. You know, you're not there to prove that Jesus is the savior of the world. You are there to uh, to be um, to pass the seed, to sow the seed, and when people look at all of us here, we've all suffered very much with loss, with sickness, with one thing or another. People that haven't got that belief, they think to themselves, "Well, how can she possibly?" be happy going through life with what she's suffering. Do you know what I, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. You know, you don't have to push, you know, I do, I hate the expression Bible pusher, Bible punchers. We don't have to be like that. No. We, have, we actually have to say very little, but gently, quietly, and by how we behave, I think is very important. I think that's exactly yeah. right, Claire. I think that's what Roger was saying, really. Yeah. Um, Le Leslie? Um, I, saw, I saw Sharon again this week because we're, we're helping her repair her car. And um, as we were going into the garage, she brought her husband with her, so I, I was reacquainted with him. And she said, 
I don't know why you're doing this. So I said, we well, need help. And she said, yes, but you've given it, given us money. Da, 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 da. And I said, yeah, I said, it's what we do. She said, but why? I said, because we love you. You're one of God's children. And she said, but you know we're not Christians. And I said, no, but we still love you. And he loves you. And I, I always feel so inadequate because I don't really know what to say because I'm not a great spouter for Christianity. Um, I'd rather do than talk. Um, and I can't well, spout for the Bible very much. I'm a very bad Bible reader. Um, but she, it, she just couldn't understand why we cared about her and... I find that very sad that people don't think they count. And uh, so if anybody's got any bright ideas of what... I would, I, would, I would just use the word yet. She doesn't, she doesn't mm. know yet. But you, the way you're portraying Christian people is, is, is fantastic. And well, Christ-like. It's mm. Christ-like, that's, that's true. So... People just let them. let God water that word that you're giving out through your actions and your lifestyle. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I can't say to Leslie, but um, he has given each of us different gifts. And your gift and Tony's are doers. You know, um, Rogers, Roger and Sue, they have, their gifts are to bring it all together uh, particularly bringing on different courses. Eric's is to keep us all um, united through IT. We all have different gifts. And I think each and every one of us here, we do um, all our bits to make the whole, the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I exactly agree, Claire. Eric. Can't hear you. I have to keep pressing the button on this thing. Uh, one of the ways <laughs> I, I can help Leslie answer that is that I remember um, when I went to um, when I joined the fire brigade. You, you have to you have to go for a three month residential course. Um, and um, one of the things that I remember vividly this one of the things that came up was that um, the instructor said to us, "You will you will get asked by people." how can you do this job? You know, what, what, what makes you when everybody's running the other way and you run, you go towards the danger or you put your life in danger to save somebody else. And he said, what, what you have to say to people is it's just what we do. It's, it, it isn't a job. And it's like the nurses on the front line, isn't it? Of the, yeah. that's putting the, the lives at risk to, to help yes. other people it's not just about picking up the salary uh, every month and all the rest of it and I, and I think it's the same with what we do as Christians and what the uh, my knowledge of the Bible isn't very good but it's what what the scriptures say about what Jesus would do Jesus would never leave somebody in distress no. And in the main, I don't think we would either. You know, if it, mm. my, my my Christian walk has changed me in. Um, I, I could never really drive past anybody who was in distress and just leave them there because, it, uh, you know, it, it's none of my business. I'm not going to get involved. You, it makes you somehow want to get involved and and um, help people who need mm. that. So yeah. I don't know if that helps you, Leslie, in any way. Yes, yes. I'll keep on keeping on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. I think that's fantastic, Leslie. John? Leslie, John. just keep singing to yourself. And I agree with, um, with um, Roger when he said yet, because... Just keep singing to yourself, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wondrous compassion and purity. 
It's a wonderful hymn, so you can look it up. But that's, you know, if you're portraying Jesus, if, if people are seeing the beauty uh, of Jesus in you, then they'll see that you're God sent. Yes. If you're God sent, it'll become a yet, same as Roger said, uh, because yeah. eventually they will. Yeah. About yeah. two phone calls. And exactly. There's, there's something really stopping us this morning. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you everybody for coming along this morning. We have one episode left of the prayer course. Look forward to seeing you all next Thursday. And have a good week. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely to see you all. It is. It's mm. lovely to see you all. We miss you. No. <laughs> we miss you. We're sort of here. We're sort of together, but we're not. 